In this set of Snap Circus videos, we're looking at Project 684, the Vibration LED, to Project 692, the Vibration Light, the last of the projects of this book. So, 684 is the Vibration LED. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So, we have three volts being supplied. At this time, we're using our little spring-loaded vibration switch. It's controlling the base of our NPN transistor, which is then feeding the base of our PNP because we have a Darlington transistor set up here. That then is controlling the current flow to our red LED here. And then we had the little C2 capacitor, which provides kind of a clamp for the vibration switch so that we can see the light LED a little better by storing a little bit of its energy here for the transistors. So we turn on the slide switch, obviously the light doesn't light up because it's not sensing any vibration for the little spring in there to create a connection. But if I just tap on the board here, you can see our red LED lights up. And that's because when we create vibration there, the little tiny spring in there momentarily connects. And that allows current to flow through here to connect our base of our NPN transistor up with current and in that way it can then supply our PNP and get that lit up and because our capacitor is there it stores a little bit of charge so that our LED doesn't immediately go out it actually allows us to see it a little more visually and if we continue tapping we can kind of keep it keep it going there so that's how project 684 works and now we're going to move on to project 685 which is the vibration speaker so here we are, Project 685, the vibration speaker. So there it is in the book, here's on the board. So it's pretty much the same as the last circuit. We just took the capacitor out and replaced our LED with the speaker here. So obviously when we have it on, we're not going to hear anything. And hopefully I can show you this. I'm going to try to bring the speaker up very close. And I'm tapping on the side of the board here and periodically you can hear the speaker put something out again it's a little hard to hear if it was a quiet room doing this yourself you'll certainly hear it but that's how project 685 works now project 686 is the measure of the vibration as you tap the switch so that we're just going to take the speaker out and replace it with the meter on our low setting so i'm just going to put it there and then what will happen is as we tap the board we should see the meter deflect there showing current going through it so now see, if I, depending on how much I'm tapping, if I'm tapping lightly, it only gets a little bit of current. If I tap a little bit more, we can get more current going through there by keeping the contact on longer. So that's how Project 686 works. So now we're going to move on to Project 687, which is the Shaky Birthday Song. So here are Project 687, the Shaky Birthday Song. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we got 6 volts for this, and we have our D3 diode, providing some current detection and then limiting, along with our transformer for a speaker, and then its output is being fit partly through our music I see there and the music I see is being controlled by our NPN transistor which then from its base is going off of our vibration switch so you know I've gone ahead and omitted the slide switch so if you have the vibration switch in your hand the music I see won't play as long as it's not detecting any vibration here to turn our NPN transistor on as soon as we start doing something with our switch there you can hear it through our speaker So 
So it is making the music I see play, but it's, it's really distorted. And again, as long as you're shaking or tapping this, you'll get it output there. So that's how Project 687 works, and now we're going to look at Project 688, which is the vibration detector. So here at Project 688, the vibration detector. There it is in the book, and here it's on the board. So it's similar to the first project, it's just that we've omitted the capacitor out of it, and we've got the jumper wires for our vibration switch. So depending how you shake it, it may not light until you get it into a certain orientation. Of course, it also helps if you turn power onto the circuit. So again, if you shake it certain ways, it may be difficult to light, or it may light pretty easily. Like this, up and down. It's doing pretty well. This way, not doing so well. This way, a little bit, but up and down works pretty good. So it also shows that it is sort of a oriented switch. And of course you can tap it, and that will do it to you. So that's Project 688. So Project 689 is out of balance. So here we are, Project 689, out of balance. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we've used the battery uh, packs this time because we have a full 6 volts and 3 volts being used together. So 6 volts is supplying our relay and our SCR control over here with our spring switch and that's again is controlling the relay for our uh, conditions here. So normally our fan will be running and that runs at 3 volts so it runs off of this pack here. But if there's vibration detected on the switch, that'll trigger our SCR, which will keep it on, and that will then turn our relay on, disconnecting the fan and instead connecting our 6-volt lamp into the circuit there, illuminating the lamp and our motor coming to a stop. So when we turn the circuit on, our fan runs normally, running off of 3 volts there. But if there's any vibration detected, like if the wheel was out of balance on the fan there, it would activate the SCR, causing our relay to click over, and then our 6-volt lamp illuminating, disconnecting power to our fan. And to reset it, we have to turn the main power off. So this is kind of a simulation of an actual thing for machines to detect if a wheel or something is, has gone out of balance, and that will shut the machine off to prevent any kind of damage. So kind of an example of that. So that's project 689, so now we're looking at project 690, the vibration alarm. So here we are, project 690, the vibration alarm. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. So we've gone back to 3 volts, and this time we have our NPN transistor driving our alarm IC going out to our speaker. And our switch, vibration switch, of course, is can help controlling the base of it there. And we got our C2 capacitor to provide a little bit of a hold when we do it. So, you might have just briefly heard. As we tap, we can activate the NPN transistor there, which then turns on our alarm IC. So that's Project 690. So Project 691 is the Vibration Space War. So here we are, Project 691, the Vibration Space War. 
There it is in the book, and here's on the board. So we reconfigured the circuit from the last one to have the Space 4 IC using our PNP transistor with our vibration switch and our speaker on the output there. So obviously when we turn power on to the circuit, nothing happens. But if we tap anywhere, we can make the Space 4 cycle through different sounds every time it activates the PNP transistor there connecting our Space 4 up. So every time you tap it, it does that. So that's project 691. So now project 692 is the vibration light. So here are project 692, the vibration light. There it is in the book, and here's it on the board. So we've got three volts feeding our Darlington transistor set up here with our PNP transistor controlling our two and a half three volt lamp there. And then our NPN transistor is being controlled via our vibration switch there going to its base and then we have the 10 microfarad capacitor providing some extra capacitance to keep the transistor on after the vibration switch is triggered. So obviously when we turn the circuit on nothing happens but if we tap the board our two and a half three volt lamp comes on briefly and stays on for about a second or two and then slowly goes out and comes out. And it restarts every time and if we just keep tapping the board there we can keep the two and a half volt three volt lamp on until we stop and then when the capacitor discharges it goes out. So that is it for project 692 and that is the last project of, of this book. I just knocked my flashlight down there for this project's 512 to 692 so that's the projects concluding the set here so that is all the physical projects up through the 750 set but we still have some more to go so next time we're going to start looking at the computer interface projects the model ci 73 and look at all the projects that are going to involve using the computer with the cable that we have here and of course I will have a separate video before we get into these projects showing how to get it properly set up, what computer to use in my opinion, and also how to get the software for that if you're not able to get a hold of it. So that's it for this set of Snap Circuits videos.